Hey guys, we're out here on the range today and we're talking about one of our most asked about questions, which is how do I train at an indoor range to get better with my equipment and to train more in the line with the kind of stuff that you see us doing in a day to day. So here we are in one of the stalls at the range. We're going to talk about some drills you can do, the ways you can use your gear and how you can actually get better at the more practical stuff that you're going to do when you do leagues or when you conceal carry. The very first thing we're going to talk about is drawing from a holster. Now, a lot of ranges don't like this. We have a special class here that we take people through. We teach them how to do it safely. Anybody can take this class. And then once you pass the class, you're allowed to come into the range and practice drawing from your holster. I'm going to do a couple draws from concealment, and then we're going to get Zach in here, and he's going to show you kind of how he uses his full gear. So I'm going to be more of the concealed carry demonstration. So we have a target set out in front of us at a kind of a close up defensive distance. And I'm going to do a couple little drills where I'm just going to react and shoot it. So I don't have any kind of shot timer or anything with me right now. So we're just going to practice the basic fundamentals and the body mechanics first and just make sure I feel comfortable. And we're going to go nice and slow because it's more important to make sure that I'm familiar with what I'm doing than I'm trying to beat a clock. So I took a couple nice, slow, controlled shots. I watched my sights the whole time. That's a drill that we call a controlled pair. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and safely reholster. We're going to do this a few times, just get a little bit comfortable. And one more time. So we see this is a really, really great way to practice exactly how I would be concealed carrying my firearm. If I had other equipment with me, like a spare magazine I kept in my pocket or anything else like that, it would be absolutely the right thing to do to practice utilizing that equipment as well. Do some reloads, do some other weapon manipulation, whatever I would actually carry with me in a normal day, use it right here in the booth and get good with it here on the ring. All right, so it's my turn now. Today, I'm wearing a full belt by T-Rex, the Orion belt. You don't have to necessarily have a gun belt to come in here and have a lot of fun and practice. This is my, gu my gun belt that I use for leagues, uh, but you'll, we try to shoot a lot with a pro timer just to be able to get reaction drills down, but sometimes it's hard to do in an indoor range. you got a lot of gunfire going on. The shot timer kind of gets a little squirrely, but what we can do with our range is we can do reactionary drills on the carrier itself where it's going to face me for a period of time I'm going to draw, I'm going to put two rounds in it. It's going to go back to an edge. We're going to do that a few times. It's a great way to practice reactionary drills if you don't have a shot timer or the ability to use a shot timer in the range because of your peers shooting next to you. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing this. All right, we are shooting at a fairly close distance for the sake of a camera and being able to see our hits, but as you can see, we're punching the A box here. This is a great way to do some reactionary drills in the range without a shot timer. Something that we come across very often, especially when we run leagues or a USPSA match or something like that, is a lot of people who come here and shoot on the range have never actually practiced reloading before. It, it sounds kind of simple and kind of silly to say, but far too many people, at least in our opinion, when they come to the range, they shoot their full magazine, then they kind of relax, they reload slowly, and then they reload and just keep going. So they've never actually tried to go through the motions quickly and get their gun backed up and ready to go. And that is a great drill to practice right here in the booth, familiarizing yourself with the buttons, the switches, the levers, all the things on your firearm, especially in maybe a timed component. Make sure you use those manual safeties. Make sure you don't lose track of those buttons.
something like that, putting yourself under a little bit of a pressure, a little bit of a time crunch, that's a really great way to expose errors and flaws in your training. You don't have to go very fast. You can start with a, a large amount of time and just slowly try to get yourself better and better and better and see what you can really do. This is going to be where you start to notice if you have problems with any of the equipment you carry. Maybe you start to realize your holster isn't really user-friendly. Maybe your belt isn't quite good enough to hold everything the way it needs to be. This is where you can start to make adjustments and really fine-tune what you carry or what you use in a competition. So I'm going to do the same drill that Andrew did, again, using the carrier and the functionality the carrier has with it to do one reload once. Uh, and we start this and give ourselves plenty of time focusing on the fundamentals of punching out, uh, getting your target acquisition, firing the round, and everything slow. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, has never rang truer. I mean, it just is what it is. So we're going to get started at one r once. So you can put yourself in any situation you want, hands relaxed, admin pose, whatever, but And there we have it. Another thing that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to practice is to shoot rapid fire. So whether it be you don't really have an opportunity because you don't want to make your neighbors mad or your local gun range has very strict rules on how fast you can shoot inside the range. We don't have any of those kind of rules here because we actually encourage people to practice in a more realistic way of shooting. So we're going to do a couple basic rapid fire drills that can be used in any kind of competition or any self-defense format. We're gonna show you exactly how those work out here, starting with what we call the hammer and care, which is gonna essentially be, get the gun up as quick as you can, aim towards the center of the largest part of your target, and fire twice as quickly as you feel comfortable. Now, a big difference to what we were doing earlier and what we're doing now is, earlier we were aiming and firing for both of our shots. With the hammer pickers, we kinda of only wanna aim once pull the trigger twice. And we'll show you what that looks like. The name of the game here is speed. So try to push yourself, try to go fast. Now remember, nobody's ever won a gunfight because they reholstered fast. So take your time and be safe. Now in that drill, I'm looking for a good sight picture. As quickly as I can find it, I pull that trigger twice. Now at this distance, at realistic defensive distances, and even where we're shooting in most competitions, both of my shots are going to be pretty centered on the target. Now if a target was much further away from me, I would have to slow it down a little bit. And that's a great example of controlling your speed based on where the target is. The next drill we're gonna show you guys is one called a build drill. This is very, very similar to kind of a panicked reactionary drill where as soon as a threat presents itself, you just keep shooting until the threat stops. And the way that we do this one is we draw the gun up as fast as we can, we get that sight picture as fast as we can, and we get six shots into the center of the target. Try to hold the gun nice and steady and get those six shots as quickly as possible. This is going to be a true test of your grip and your control over that picture. And remember, just because we're shooting fast doesn't mean that we have to reholster fast. Keep your reholster nice and slow, stable and controlled. When your shots are over, the drill is over. And be free and safe. So, Andrew showed you that drill from concealment where we're going to be running hammered pairs. Again, a sight picture, two shots, and then running a build drill. I like to call it a William drill to give him due respect. Um, but... Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about real quick is if you don't feel comfortable coming from the draw yet, and it's something you can practice at your home, you can still get the same feeling and the same fundamentals by punching from your center line. So if you draw and you come up, did you punch straight out? 
You can do that in the range. As soon as you're done, bang, bang, bring the gun back to us. They call it high range. And they punch back out of you. Acquire sights, boom, boom, bring it back. It's an easy and really safe way if you don't feel comfortable yet drawing balls. But I'm going to go ahead and run a couple of hammer pairs and then William drill because he deserves some respect, damn it. All right, so I'm going to do my first hammer pair from the draw. The second, I'm going to go from compress high ready. So I'm just going to come back here, got the target recycle. This simulates drawing from a holster. Audience, if you're private, that. And don't flinch. Now the William drill. Put some respect on his name, Dan. Now, anybody who's ever shot at a public range before has seen all sorts of different kinds of paper targets available at the range desk. Lots of different kinds of games and all other sorts of things that you can do. Now, some of these targets, they're just for fun. Other ones actually serve a purpose. Many games that you can play can really teach you to try to be a lot more technical with your gun. And one of our favorites, one, favorite ones to use is this pacing target right here. So we have lots of different size targets with different numbers on them. You can use these with a buddy at the range to help call each other out on and give yourself different activities to do. It really helps you speed up, slow down, be a little bit more technical in the way you think about the drill. And it can also cause a little bit of stress, just like putting a time on what you're trying to do. So let's get a couple pacing drills in. Let's see what it looks like. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go big up to small going five, four, three, two, one. That was ass. That was really bad. <laughs> so from my draw, I had an absolute terrible grip. Pulled the trigger, it was way off to the right. And as I tried to adjust my grip back, I slowly worked my way back onto the targets. All right, so Andrew said it perfectly. It doesn't matter if you're drawing from concealment, shooting from a holster, just in the stall. This is focusing more on the mechanics of operating the gun and transitioning to different targets. So nothing really to add there. We're just gonna do the speed drill. I'm gonna use the right side of the target. Hopefully actually hit my shot, unlike Andrew. One of my favorite ways when we're teaching classes to simulate a little bit of stress on a student is to use a target just like this and try to get someone kind of off their center and get their mind thinking and distract them from the drill right in the middle of it. Now, this is perfect if you go to the range with a range buddy and you guys are doing some shooting together. It's very similar to calling out targets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to stare at the target ready to shoot. And Zach is either going to yell out a number or yell out some sort of clue to a number the that I'm to shoot, or maybe even like a simple math question. And then I have to figure it out, process exactly what I'm doing, and hit the target as quickly as possible and maintain control over the firearm. Now, I also want to be thinking about my pacing here too. If it's a bigger target that I land on, I should be going fast. If it's a smaller one, I should be slowing it down. Hopefully, oh, Zach is not here. Shooter ready? Shooter ready. Two nine. Take a run. One more. Three plus three. Made the Marine do math. It's six. <laughs> All right, now let's get back up here and let's begin. Prime numbers ascending. All right. Everybody lives to fight another day. So another cool drill you can use with this exact target or target similar to it is an actual pacing drill. And what I mean by that is as you punch out on your target, you're acquiring your target, you're firing rounds, and you're pulling the trigger as fast as you feel comfortable and as fast as you can, still hitting your desired point of impact. 
and you just keep building that speed up. You can do that at closer distances to start. You can do it at farther distances as you get better with it. Uh, you can also practice at closer distances, but a smaller group with starting at this guy looking at like the number six on the bottom right as opposed to the 10 on the top right. So we're going to start on the 10 and we're going to just punch out on that guy, shoot a few rounds and start picking up our pace. I'll walk it down. I'll walk it down. I'll walk it down. And hopefully we see some good impacts. So it's going to look like this. So there's five rounds in the 10. Pretty good group. We're going to start uh, the next yeah. round on the nine. Punch out. Again, had a little bit of a, a flub there on the trigger press myself, but group's still pretty good. Um, so now we're going to move down to the eight. Punch out. And I drop one low. So we'll do that one again on the eight. Good hits there. We're going to punch out on the seven. Ah, low. I'm going to reset the drill completely because my first round was off the arc. So punch out. Good hits there. And then finally, we're going to do it on the six. Hopefully, yeah, we're going to do it on the six. And much to the target. You can work this drill as much as you want. You can work up, down. You can change it up, especially if you're shooting with a buddy. But push yourself. Try to increase your speed and keep your group tighter. Right now we're looking at this small at about 15 feet. We can throw the target down there farther, pick up our pacing a little bit faster. But all in all, this will help you work on your trigger break, trigger press, all the basic fundamentals, and keep your groups tight. Something really common that you see in a lot of the videos we do on leagues is seeing us deal with malfunctions out on the range. Stuff happens, we don't clean our guns every single day, nor does the average person. And every once in a while, you get a bad round in a box of ammo. So these are the kind of things that most people, when they go to the range, they kind of just handle slowly at their own time as they occur. What we're doing here is we're forcing it to occur and we're trying to resolve the issue quickly. The most important thing to remember is stay safe, don't point the gun at yourself, and keep the gun on target, get it back up, and get those rounds down range. This is exactly what it's gonna look like. Quick gun jam. I looked, I saw the jam. I missed the magazine. Two bolts heated. I wrapped it up. I got right back on target.